What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another True Game Data video. This one's going to be very different. Um, so I've always been really interested in tech. Before I even had True Game Data, I was always into tech and having the best tech and fastest PCs and components and everything. Um, so I always thought if I ever did YouTube, it would be tech-related YouTube videos like Linus Tech Tips or Jay's Two Cents, those kind of things. That's what I assumed I would get into if I ever did uh, YouTube videos. But it turned out that I had an opportunity to get in Call of Duty. Um, so I took that opportunity, and obviously you're all watching this. So um, that's where I've you know made my my following. Um, but I have started a second channel, it's called True Tech Data, and that is going to be something that I have sporadic uploads on. Um, it's not going to be consistent. I do have a couple more planned videos for it after this one. Um, but if you're interested in that, I'll link it down below. You can head over there and subscribe to that channel. Um, if you don't subscribe to it, you probably won't see these future videos because it's such a small channel. It's not going to get recommended to you. Um, but anyway, today's video is all about the 5950X, which is an AMD Ryzen processor versus the 12900K specifically in Warzone, as well as the RTX 3090, which is an NVIDIA GPU, versus the uh, Radeon 6900 XT. I'm uniquely qualified to make this video because during all of this true game data stuff, I've needed the most powerful Warzone rig that I can build so I can test these things in Warzone at high FPS and get you guys accurate data. And at one point, I owned a 5950X, a 3090, a 12900K, and a 6900 XT, which are the fastest components you can buy for a PC um, from all manufacturers right now for uh, for gaming. So I went in and did multiple tests comparing every combination of those components. And I'm going to show you guys the results of that in this video. And again, I'm going to repost this on uh, the True Tech Data channel. I'm just posting on the main channel so you guys um, also see it if you're interested in it. And so I can popularize the second channel. So anyone who's from True Game Data that's interested in tech and wants to watch me do tech reviews, uh, I'm planning on doing a Tesla Model 3 long range uh, acceleration boost review on the tech channel as well uh, and a laptop review I have a Lenovo Legion 7i and it's incredible so I'll be doing a review of that as well um, so if you're interested in that again linked below uh, be sure to go check it out uh, but yeah let's hop into it and we will start talking about uh, what the absolute fastest combination of components is for Warzone uh, and if you have one of these components what GPU or what CPU you should buy to complement it so like I said I had all of the fastest components available from different manufacturers to test against each other and I actually did that um, so I just want to go through what the fastest actual components are for gaming right now basically you have AMD you have Intel on this the CPU market and then for GPUs you have AMD uh, and Nvidia so the fastest processors that are available right now are the Ryzen 9 5950X uh, which is what is in my streaming PC and work PC basically and then in my gaming PC I have the i9 12900K um, basically, the difference between those two is they're just they have different architectures, so they're made by different manufacturers. The the Ryzen has uh, more threads; it has 34 threads, 16 physical cores, and then 16 hyper-threaded cores for 32 um, threads that can compute things, basically. And then the new architecture on the 12,000 series for Intel um, actually has something unique. They call them performance cores and efficiency cores. Basically, it has eight physical cores that are dedicated to maximum performance. It has eight efficiency cores that are also physical cores inside the CPU that are dedicated to doing things that are uh, less intensive, that need less performance, but uh, would benefit from having a more efficient process or a more uh, less power consumption during those those processes. So uh, it has 24 threads, so it has it has 16 physical, physical, physical cores between the uh, performance and efficiency, uh, and then it has up to 24 uh, threads with the hyper-threaded cores as well. And then, of course, on the GPU side of things, we have the NVIDIA RTX 3090 and the AMD 6900 XT. Again, I owned all of these components at the same time because I was in between different builds. Um, I have my stream and working PC, and then I have my gaming PC over here. And I tried all these different things together in different combinations to see what is the fastest. So that's the whole point of this video is to let you guys know what the best combination of components are right now currently. Um, it is... February 1st, 2022 right now. So obviously this will change. Tech evolves quickly. So there will be faster products coming out soon. But right now, uh, this video will help you decide what the, the best price for performance and the best just speed overall you can get from all these components is. All right, so as far as testing methodology, I'm, I'm very meticulous about how I do things. And that's from my engineering background and just me as a person i'm just very meticulous about how i test things so i did two separate tests in very different locations because your fps can be very different again this is specific to warzone i'm not saying that this cpu and gpu combination is going to be faster for every game not at all i'm saying this is specifically for warzone if you're trying to decide between a 12 k and a 5950x or a 5900x and like a 3080 3080 ti 3090 versus the 6900 xt 
that's what this video is for if you're a warzone player specifically um so basically i walked two different paths one was an airfield which is a highly populated area lots of buildings and things like that so that's a lower fps area and then i also did a test out in the jungle of uh the caldera map in warzone the new warzone pacific map and that was just north of north of sub pens i walked the exact same path each time um holding the same weapon i i normalized as many things as i could i had no overclocks for any of these things i had no background processes running um and again all the pc parts were identical except for the cpu and gpu combination as far as the rest of the rig ram is actually extremely important for warzone and other games that are very cpu intensive so like battlefield games really big map games with lots of players it's really important to have fast ram more important than people used to say um so in this build for this test um, this isn't the fastest RAM you could possibly get, so this isn't actually the fastest build. We'll cover that at the end, but in my rig, um, I used one of those two processor combinations, one of the two GPU combinations, and then I had uh, two sticks of 8 gigabytes, 4,000 CL15 uh, RAM in my, in my rig, and then just a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD, and all these tests were done at 1440p, which is kind of like probably the most popular resolution for PCs right now. All right, so let's start getting into the actual testing. Um, we're going to go over graphs first, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, individual cases later on at the end of the video to help you guys understand exactly if you own this part which other part should you buy or if you're just building your pc from scratch so first off um, there's four different measurements i took there's average fps maximum fps one percent low and 0.1 percent low um, so the reason one percent low and 0.1 percent low are super important and probably the most important measurement is because if you think about what an average means if if i'm getting 400 fps but every one second my frames are dropping to literally like one fps or something like that I'd still have a super high average FPS, um, but that would be an unplayable experience because it would be so choppy and, and just super, super unplayable. So that's why that's where 1% uh, lows and 0.1% lows come in. Uh, those kind of include that kind of thing and would make it much more obvious that those stutters and, and slowdowns were happening rather than an average FPS where the vast majority of the time it's running well, but then these little stutters happen that still make it very unplayable and a bad experience. So I've Got those numbers in here as well we're going to start with average fps at airfield i'm only going to go over airfield in terms of these graphs but at the end we'll talk about the jungle as well since the different areas can have different effects on gpus and and the the performance that they have because of what different gpus are good at so um starting off just airfield average fps i've color coded these bars so uh they match the the uh, manufacturer so on the left we have blue and green which is obviously intel and nvidia so we have 12900k 3090 Next up, we have 12900K with the 6900 XT, so that's blue and red. And then the third is 5950X, which is AMD, plus the 3090, which is NVIDIA, so green. And then the final combination is both AMD 5950X with the 6900 XT, so that's a full red bar. Um, so this isn't eight different bars. This is four different bars. I just basically made them double bars so you could see the manufacturers in a more visual way. Um, so just looking at this, you can see right off the bat... Um, I know it's bad practice to not scale this at zero, but I just wanted to zoom this in so you guys could see the difference a little bit more. Uh, so this graph is vertically only from 125 FPS to 225 FPS. You can see the only combination on this chart that breaks 200 average FPS was the 1200K 6900XT. Um, so that is the fastest average FPS uh, comparison between these different uh, builds. The 5950X and 3090 does not perform very well as a combo for some reason. Um, I don't know why that is. Uh, in general, you can see just right off the bat, it looks like the 12900K is running faster than the 5950X for this game specifically. Obviously, this can vary between different games, but I come from Warzone, and I know there's people that specifically want to know what performs the best in Warzone, so that's what this video is all about. Um, the 5950X and 6900XT does pretty well. It does about the same as a 12900K and a 3090. Um, so we're starting to see a trend where 12900K seems to be faster and 6900XT seems to be faster. So those are what we're going to lean towards, but let's go to the next slide and look at max FPS. Uh, you get basically the same story here again, and again, the 5950X and 3090 combo does not perform well at all. Um, one thing to note, I did have resizable bar on for the 5950X and 6900XT. If you don't know what that is, that's just something that can increase performance that specifically uh, AMD has right now. They're rolling it out for Intel and NVIDIA as well, um, but because AMD manufactures both the 5950X and the 6900XT, uh, they had the ability to you know, release this resizable bar technology earlier than Intel and NVIDIA. I do think everyone's going to have that eventually, but I'm not sure that it's completely available for uh, Intel and NVIDIA right now, but it 100% is for the AMD tests, and I did have it on for that because it's an advantage that you have, so it should just be on in general. Uh, and so you can see that, again, 12900K, 6900XT wins over the 12900K and 3090 on max FPS. 
I'm um, looking at 1% lows. Again, this is probably the most important measure of this and 0.1% lows just because it really shows you how smooth your gameplay is going to feel. Um, again, we have the same exact story here. It's pretty consistent across the board, which is why I'm not going to show jungle. Even though the jungle numbers were a little bit different, they were proportionally consistent with these. So again, 1200K, 1600XT, even though that doesn't have a resizable bar like the 5950X and the 6900XT does, uh, it ends up performing quite a bit better in almost in literally every situation I tested, and this is this is just the golden combo right now. Um, followed by 12900K and 3090, and then slightly slower is the 5950X, 6900XT, and again the 5950X and RTX 3090 performed pretty poorly. One percent lows. I'm not going to keep saying the same thing over and over. Performs exactly the same. You guys can pause it and look at this if if you want. So I wanted to put these results in more of a sentence form for people that are specifically trying to decide between two different products. Obviously, the combination you saw in the charts over and over, the 12900K and the 6900XT is the fastest combination for Warzone in both average, max, and 1% lows and 0.1% lows. But I wanted to put it in like a sentence form here. So I have 12900K and my test performs better than the 5950X across the board, but by how much with each GPU. So you can compare how... Um, the 12900K, how much the 12900K beats the 5950X with each GPU on this chart. So average FPS, the 3090 GPU, the 12900K was on average 15% faster, 38% faster in 0.1% lows. Um, but if you chose the 6900XT, um, the 12900K was still faster than the 5950X, 6% faster on average, and 34% faster on 0.1% lows in airfield. Um, again, the num numbers in jungle were very, very similar. Um, so I included those on this page, so you can look at those if you want, but... Uh, the results are the same across the board no matter where i was on the map so that's a good thing that it's consistent you don't have to decide which area you're playing on to decide which gpu you want or cpu you want so then obviously from this 1200k is better everywhere than the 5950x for warzone specifically with my rig um, that could potentially change with different ram and different motherboards and there's a million factors that go into this but in general consistently the 1200k is going to beat the 5950x as far as top end cpus go for warzone specifically and then on this page, I did the exact same thing, only I wrote a sentence for the GPUs. So in my testing, the 6900XT was better than the 3090 across the board, but by how much with each CPU? So this is sort of the same thing, but this time we are varying the CPU instead of varying the GPU in these comparisons. So at Airfield, the 5950X was 15% faster than, uh, the, sorry, the 6900XT was 15% faster than the 3090 in average FPS and 13% better in 1% lows, 0.1% lows. Um, the 6900XT was 6% 6 faster average FPS than the 12900K or than the, than the 3090 um, at airfield and 10% faster in 0.1% lows. So again, 6900XT 6, beat the 3090 everywhere. Um, and jungle, same story there, 24% faster with the um, 5950X and 6900XT instead of 5950X and 3090. And 0.1% lows were better as well, dramatically better, and then the same with the 12900K. So overall, 6900XT, for some reason, in most games, it's not the case. In most games, the RTX 3090 is going to beat the 6900XT, but for some reason, something about the type of rendering that's done in Warzone, uh, whatever the 6900XT has, it, it just performs better across the board. And I've, I've seen a lot of... I've, I've literally watched reviews of... of you know, tech YouTubers saying that there's no shot, there's no chance that the, the, the 6900XT is faster than the 3090 in Warzone. And they've gone on to show that like the 1% lows and 0.1% lows are, are worse, but the average is about the same or a little bit higher on the 6900XT. And that's just not true. I mean, I literally went and tested it, at least with my rig, not even close. 10%, 25% higher, 0.1% lows is a dramatic improvement for the, the 6900XT over the 3090. And it's way cheaper. 3090, so what happened was I had a 3090, I owned a 3090, um, I saw some reviews coming out online that the 6900 XT was actually beating the 3090 uh, in Warzone, so I was like, what the heck, I'll just buy one, try it, if it doesn't run faster, I'll sell it, so I went on offer up, bought one used the same day, for I think it was 1400, and then I went and tested it, and it was faster than my 3090, and I sold my 3090 for $2,300, so I made $900 net profit, to get more performance is just a no-brainer and the same is going to be true if you have a 3080 you can probably sell your 3080 for more than a 6900 xt and if you only play warzone you'll get more frames with a 6900 xt and better 0.1 percent lows so it's just pretty much a no-brainer all right i hope you guys enjoyed my very first true tech data youtube video uh obviously this channel is going to be more sporadic uploads it's not going to be nearly as consistent as the main channel and i'm already not as consistent on the main channel as i would like to be 
Um, I just have a lot of things going on outside of YouTube. I have to, you know, program the website and test all the data for Call of Duty and things like that. Um, but I do plan on uploading more videos. I'm going to do a laptop review. I have a Legion 7i uh, Lenovo laptop that is incredible and just insanely powerful for what it is. The best laptop I've ever owned. So I'm going to do a full review of that on this channel at some point. I'm also planning on doing a Tesla Model 3 review. Um, that'll be the long range version with acceleration boosts. So I'm pretty excited for that. That's going to be something totally different than I've never done before. So if you want to see any of that content, uh, please remember to drop a sub on the channel or you probably won't get notified since this is a small channel that's brand new. Um, unless you drop a sub, you will probably see it pop up on your feed. But appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.